Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Here to analyze the manifesto of the two major political parties, the All Progressive Congress and People's Democratic Party, especially with regard to foreign policy, is as to diplomat and former Nigerian ambassador to the United States of America, Israel, and the Republic of Cyprus, Professor George Obiozo. Thank good you, Prof. It's Thank good to have you on this, morning, uh, on this show again. Thank you. Yes. Thank the you. other time you were here, you were paying tribute to Kofi Annan. Oh, yeah. The late That's right. Yes. Thank Prof, you for well, joining you, us. You had the introduction. Yes. What's the political parties are coming forward with their manifestos uh, and their plans. One is called, the APC one is called the Next Level The Next Document. Level. Mm -hmm. uh, article of the PDP. He's talking about taking Nigeria, making Nigeria Nigeria's great again. Yeah, let's get Nigeria uh, working what's again. What's your take on but some Melinda, of the things I, they are proposing? The two slogans speak for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerians okay. can interpret the slogans for whatever they want. Mm. Uh, it has a power of suggestion that, that the headlines or the titles of their slogans. Honestly, manifestos are normally the first signal or what the government would like to emphasize as its policy when it comes, the party comes to power. Quite often, uh, with the principal attention to Nigeria, manifestos really have been serving as merely a propaganda, something to launch a political party and you drop it there and go home. And politics, and the, all the manifesto and the, all the policies become highly politicized and even personalized. That is a, a good observation objective. On the other hand, that's a generalization. Specifically, some governments, parties when they come to power and become government, try hard to choose and select among the manifesto, meaning they have overpromised the public. Mm -hmm. They have increased so much uh, expectation. Because sometimes, when you come to power as a party, political wisdom now will prevail. Between those things that are desirable, which you are promising the people in the manifesto, and indeed the possible things you can do for the country. So it becomes a situation of necessity for choice for the government. And that's what the government is all about, a matter of choice or priority for the nation. So the manifesto of the two parties, two major parties, speak for themselves. And uh, it also speaks about philosophy behind the parties, particularly behind their leaders. Because whatever you talk or speak about manifesto, it is leadership driven. The leader is everything in politics and war. So the issue that confronts Nigeria now between the two major parties is a, a choice between promise and fulfillment. And that is a, a situation that makes it more dangerous for incumbent party that has performed in the last four years because there are basis for assessment of what they have done. Because this promise, some of them have come earlier, about four years ago. So it has more problem of evidence or proof. <laughs> but that is the nature of the business. Unless you have something concrete for people to make reference they just go through generalization. Yeah, but one point. So for the new, for the uh, other party, which is uh, PDP, that is opposition, what you can see there is a major attraction and promises. Mm. And that's the basis of, upon which the public will be looking at them and then focus on the leadership. That is, can that leadership perform? on any of the promises. Okay, In other words, like Americans, when they are dealing with the politicians or businessmen, they ask you, can we buy a used car from this man? That is 
So they make sure you, don't, you didn't buy a lemon. <laughs> Something that has only a visible attraction and not. Well, Prof, when you look at these two documents, we're narrowing down to these two political parties <laughs> yes. for very obvious reasons. Y yes, uh, For course. the reason that most people are saying the 2019 general election is likely to be a two-horse race. Well, definitely, I agree now, with that. The documents tend to look alike. Maybe <laughs> the details may be different, but they're talking about more or less the same thing. Good. But someone has observed that in the two documents, yes. uh, there isn't much in terms of foreign policy. Great. Why do you think that that is great, overlooked? Great, great. In fact, the two documents look alike. Nigerian elite is a do incoherent elite. In other words, they find it difficult to have consensus on any major national issue. That is what is the evidence of incoherent political elite, which is part of the political crisis in Nigeria, uh, particularly the third world countries. In some nations in the world, there are issues over which the political elite agree, mm. particularly issues of national security, issues of national foreign policy, mm -hmm. as long as it deals with national interest. You, you get my point. Yes. There will be still disputes, but in the end, they converge in the national interest. No, so the two documents may look alike, but implementation may differ extensively based on the leadership. When we apply this to foreign policy, I can tell you that Nigerian foreign policy is very unique <coughs> in the sense uh, of general, I use the word generalization of the situation. Nigerian foreign policy must and has been always influenced by its domestic policy. And it is good. Is not a universal principle? Believe me, it's called the linkage theory. It is by Rosenew and others, you know. It's a, a, a principle. Mm -hmm. But the issue in Nigeria is you can, because of the segmentations in Nigeria are extraordinarily solid, because we're, we're not successfully built a nation. So it's a drawback in our foreign policy objectives. For example, let's be tell you, uh, come to the parties. Of, of, I will see, uh, you can only see a difference depending upon who is on top. I, I, as somebody that has been uh, lucky or privileged to look at the Nigerian foreign policy practically from since the Shagari days, mm -hmm. in Nigerian foreign policy in general, Personality of the president or prime minister or head of state determines a lot. He's, he drives the diplomacy of the country. In fact, in the study of diplomacy, the head of state or head of government is the chief diplomat. The, the, the followed by foreign minister, who is the chief agent, and ambassadors, who are messengers of peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you get my point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet, Everything revolves around the president. And during that period, if you are not too young, you will know that when a foreign policy president is in situ, you will see something unique, very visible. That is traffic flow of, of dignitaries from one country to another, and your own country's leader also visiting those areas of importance. As nobody who studied Nigerian foreign policy will ever forget Balewa's visit to the United States in 1961. Yet, you know how, how, how long it has been. Or forget the international conference held here uh, on an uh, uh, African plan. 1981. Definitely. The plan of action. Yes, definitely. The plan of yes, action. definitely. So you can also go ahead and look at the leaders. You can also come to the period in which I had the privilege of being ambassador throughout. Uh, General, uh, uh, President Obasanjo was a foreign policy president. Give it to him. Whether you like him or not is out of question. What matters is international recognition and support for your country's policy. Uh, and then respectability for your leadership. In fact, 
I pity an ambassador who serves a president that is not really thoroughly known by his colleagues around the world. I have also seen that during my career. But if it is like the period of ambassador, where name recognition for him was no problem across the world, and he was on first name basis with many people in many countries in the world, the respect conferred on your leader is also conferred on your country, according to Kamal Atatok. So if our foreign policy is down or up, it's determined by the type of leadership you have and the policies that are visible, not just the logger. Well, yeah. between the two leading candidates yes. in this uh, 2019 uh, yeah. post-election, uh, who will you consider in fact, to be most capable in terms of <laughs> what you've been saying about leadership? And, and now leadership plans to, to be can, domestic can, and foreign policy. To be candid, no diplomat will answer that your question. <laughs> no, 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 no. To be candid, no, no, no. As a no, no, no. I am as a scholar too. Yes. And then in politics, there is no politics, political science and international relations. They're not science of exactitude. Okay. They're, they're not mathematics. So you cannot say choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. Every candidate has a positive and negative part of it. In fact, personality assessment by foreign countries may differ based on other different kind of indices. But Maybe you, economic. But given your experience and given the fact that you are a stakeholder in this uh, Definitely. election. Yes. Yes, you can, I mean, you can uh, assess uh, the But the, the point is not a matter of choice. Oh, this is not a point of choice. Okay. You cannot go for a or B on the basis of one But, but one you have issue. a PVC, sir. And are you going to vote? And in the problem, that is almost personal, as you know. <laughs> okay, let me okay, ask you. Yes. Um, um, the administration of President Mohamed Buhari has literally given itself a pat on the back for repairing the external image of Nigeria when it comes to countries like the U.S. Uh, countries like what? The United, the United States, States of America, uh, which it says the, the relationship had, you know, got, got into bottom rock bottom uh, before their administration, when? and they are repairing this. You were once an I'm ambassador. So, I'm so glad. Don't stop there. Okay. I'm so glad you mentioned United States of America. Great. My first book on the United States of America in 1991 was called Uneasy Friendship. Mm -hmm. Second one was uh, Nigeria and the World, uh, managing the politics of diplomatic ambivalence. Please, what I want to tell you, Foreign policy or diplomatic relation is based on national interest at the moment. Yes. We never had a better diplomatic relation with the United States except in two occasions. In fact, three. First occasion was Tafawa Belewa. Second occasion was when uh, OBJ came to power mm -hmm. as a military man mm -hmm. during the era of reconciliation uh, after the Civil War. Where people like William Rogers was assistant sec was secretary of state for the U.S. Jimmy Carter, if you get the point, mm -hmm. all of you, if you are read or you are this, you will remember this point. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that film was and, visit and, and after of course, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course, course, of course, with Jimmy Carter, yes. of course. <laughs> and then again, uh, President Obasanjo, you, you get the point. As a, as a president now, with the Clinton. You, are you following? I'm following you. You've, you. you see it for yourself. Something about foreign policy is like pregnancy. You can't hide it. If you are succeeding, the world will know. And they will react and reflect. In other words, you're saying and the relationship what is, is going on? What is going on is to watch, watch attitude of countries. By saying that U.S. Uh, we have a, a reconciliation or something happening, uh, you have to give indices. In fact, our relationship with the United States has never been so much in doubt and actually indeterminate than it is today. I want to tell you, I refer you to an article. Unfortunately, he died recently. Princeton Lyman. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You should look at the article he wrote, the last article on uh, Nigeria and the U.S. strategic interest Africa. He really didn't give us a pass mark. 
In other words, the strategic interest is uh, diminishing and declining. Mm -hmm. Why? Because their dependence on us on oil is also yes. declining. Mm -hmm. Countries follow their interest. That, that's like Ibo say, the goat follows the man who is carrying the palm, palm leaves. Because he wants to eat it. So you have to ask yourself, anybody who says our relation with the U.S. is wonderful today more than in the past. Well, it is politics, so anything goes. But in reality, you have, the, the, in fact, the international diplomacy is based on a trinity, mm -hmm. military strategic interests of countries. Can you help to defend my sovereignty, my, my assets worldwide? Mm -hmm. In other words, a great country and great foreign policy must be whereby one country cops and another catches code in that relationship. That is, they say Britain and, U and the U.S. The B U.S. cops and Britain catches code. Mm -hmm. As they say, mm -hmm. the next is the uh, political diplomatic relationship. Who are your friends? How close are you? What is the intimacy? One of the signals of U.S. problem today is the, the declining proximity between United States and Europe. Is, you see it yourself. It's part of the weakness that people are perceiving. There was a time it is U.S. and then you call Europe. You get the point. If Europe is disintegrated like Brexit, your allies are in trouble. Prof, I, I get the point you made earlier about leadership yes. Yes. being very important. Yes. But you know, in the foreign policy process, apart from the leader yeah. at the top, you also have people. But you, if, you need a team. Yes. You need institutions. Yes. Now, I have been very critical of the foreign policy process yeah. under this administration, Good. both in terms of the connection between the relevant institutions. Say, for example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. how it handles matters. Uh, or the Institute of International Affairs, yes. uh, the think tank which you led yes. at the time. Now, what will you be saying to the next president of Nigeria uh, in terms of what can be done to strengthen this, that framework and the institutions? Again, uh, 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 but I must tell you the truth. It's very difficult to, for, in any country to have a constituency for foreign policy. It doesn't bring vote easily for the politician. Okay. However, that's why the onus, the burden of driving it is on, on the leadership. And that's why the emphasis is the leadership. Concerning the ministry, as you mentioned, a unique experience of mine is that I was special advisor to General Ken Wachuku during his period as a Minister of Foreign Affairs. Of course, the ministry can work. The ministry has incredible well-trained the of public servants. Well-trained. There are some Nigerians in that ministry that can speak five or, um, or more languages. Fluently, well-trained, educated. You, you get my point. But nothing is more important to an officer, no matter even a genius, than an environment that is inspiring. You get my point. So if you think they are not performing, look for what the real cause, mm -hmm. and not what you see in the, the surface. But I, feel, I sincerely believe, because of the crisis they have met in their own time, they cannot be blamed for if certain things are not as, you, as before. The atmosphere in which they came to power is different. Mm -hmm. The environment is different. In fact, by the time this government came to power, the world has changed. In fact, the world has turned upside down. In many ways, uh, we were talking about, during the Civil War, it was comfortable to define the world into East and West. Then it was called by polarity, you know. Today, what we have is polycentrism. So many centers of power. So when you pursue one, you are losing many. Mm. And if you're a weak country or a developing country like Nigeria, how can you acquire friends in empty hand? <laughs> if the resources we have are diminishing, like oil, you know what I mean? Mm. In fact, there was a time I wrote an article about Nigeria being one of the most tempting countries in the world. In fact, it's almost like a temptress. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, take, uh, you cannot avoid uh, embracing Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But then, 
those qualities started diminishing, the affections started diminishing, and all that. So when you, uh, you speak about, about uh, ministry, he has a problem of his own, institutional problem. And the, the diversity of interference within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you cannot even imagine it. But if you, if you look back, it wasn't like that before. Nobody could have interfered uh, like that. Because you can see institutional breakdown in Nigeria. So Not only the, the, Does that also the, explain the disconnect uh, in terms of the NI? Oh, yes, because this, in fact, the, in my time, the NIIA was exactly an intellectual and research arm of a kind. That is, you did what you call a relevant research for, for policy makers. I remember how the NIA played a major role in the Liberian crisis. You, you get the point. I remember that uh, under Bolaji I mean, uh, uh, that, uh, this NIA developed so many mm -hmm. paradigms for Nigerian foreign policy. In the of course. Of course. Uh -huh. It depends well, upon who is moment. there. It depends upon who is there at, the, at those institutions. And uh, who is the receiver? You see, you cannot just produce, and uh, it's the solution you produce and nobody is taking. Mm -hmm. And then it's also, in fact, in my time, people like the vice president, like Como, used to come. You remember what we used to have then? Annual Petron's dinner mm -hmm. for a credible uh, experience. You know what I mean? Because there was money. If you ask them today, they will <laughs> to give you money. And so that is a problem. Which there only, in fact, I want to digress a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was a, a British man, a, a, a king, who then resigned his uh, throne. He gave what? You have heard about it. Mm -hmm. And he was following, what was his problem? Maria Simpson. <laughs> divorcee in America, a woman divorcee. Yeah, yeah, so Simpson. everybody was shocked. How can this king remove, <laughs> leave, leave the kingdom and go and they go after a divorced woman? He went to France and exiled with his baby, <laughs> and then wrote a book, Only the Heart Knows. Mm. Have you heard of the book? Mm. Only right. the Heart What? Only the knows. Heart Knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the elections. Yes. Um, the international community seems to be paying so much attention to Nigeria, and rightly so, because of the role she plays. Yes. Uh, however, do you think that mm. we are doing enough to leverage on this? <laughs> Sorry, Excuse me, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. Nigeria deserves all the attention for the international community. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, is it, are we lacking in population? No, we're not. In Africa. We're the dominant and essential country in Africa. As a matter of fact, even God made Nigeria a, a, an essential country in Africa. Look at how our geographical location is. Compare us with what we discovered for so long. Nigeria is like a trigger of a gun in Africa. Mm. Unless we fire, nothing happens. And that's very unique. Geographical location by destiny. Add every other thing that is there. There's no country in the world where Nigerians have not made an impact, wherever they're there. Nigerians have been people who converted difficulties in foreign countries into the dividends by working well. Mm -hmm. Obstacles they met, they, they turned it around. See, you know, even our generation went to school working almost 24 hours and paying for the, our fees. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So for Nigeria and the world, it is attraction, attraction, attraction. It is when you, are, you have failed in your expectations that you have problems. And in all in sincerity, they have been viewing us as trying to fail. But they know that Nigeria's failure will be a, a disaster, not only for the country, but for the for this way of well, so let's, uh, let's move away from foreign policy issues yes. now. Uh, let's uh, use the opportunity to talk about local politics yes. in greater detail. Yes. Um, apart from being a diplomat, a scholar, yeah. you are also a leader inside the country. Yes. Now, recently, the PDP candidate chose uh, an Iboma, yes. Peter Obi, yes. as his running mate. Yes. Now, many Nigerians thought, oh, this is one way 
of addressing the reported marginalization of Igbos. But some other leaders in the Southeast, yes. they've been complaining, they've been giving conditions. What is your take on Let this? Let me be fr frank with you. I congratulate uh, the presidential candidate of PDP for choosing Peter B and choosing from Southeast. It is not so called marginalization. It is marginalization. Mm -hmm. It is serious marginalization. You yourself should, of course, you are, you are a scholar and also a gentleman and a statesman yourself. Mm -hmm. Take a list of the Nigerian institutions. The Igbos are among the largest population of Nigeria. In fact, every place you go in Nigeria, after the indigenous, the second highest population will be Igbos. Okay. These are the, in fact, under uh, IVB, Igbos were produ produced, uh, pronounced as the federating people in the Union of Nigeria. You look for them in, you see them even under this war. You look for them in the highest place of Kavira Munda, you find them. And they integrate well. So what I'm talking about, I've been hearing people talk about Second Niger Bridge. It's an insult to Igbos to tell that the federal government is giving Igbos Second Niger Bridge as a what? A gift? As a gift. The state, that, that, that bridge is used by 13 states, both from the middle, uh, mid, uh, Midwest, uh, Middle Belt, and the others. Isn't that true? Why do you just emphasize? Did we announce how, the, how long did it take to build Mark of the Bridge? You understand what I mean? But every day, uh, Mark, uh, I thought the men, um, um, the Niger, Niger Bridge, Bridge mm -hmm. for Igbos is a, a, is a gift mm -hmm. from our own country. But people should not. Uh, uh, listen, the Igbos are the most patient Nigerians, mm -hmm. most involved patriots. Because honestly, they are, many of them are businessmen and intellectuals. Mm -hmm. If they were really thoroughgoing, angry people, you would have seen their effect. So what would you say the prospects of getting an Igbo president come 2020? No, I, 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 I not God. I don't believe in giving well, presidency to anybody free. Yeah. You must work for it. Okay. And the so conditions the must be right. Mm -hmm. Do you get my point, it's, Meanwhile, I am answering uh, about it. Mm -hmm. Believe me, in politics, one thing you must know is that it's a selfish business. Your friends may be wishing you well. The day God gives you the chance to, to succeed, some of their, those friends will become friendly enemies. <laughs> because they will say, we didn't, God, we didn't mean it when we were wishing him well. <laughs> because they will try to pull you down. It's envy. It's called a crab man. There is envy in politics. You understand? Think, things that will trigger envy, particularly is power, money, and women. Women? Of course. That, haven't you seen people killing for their girlfriends that, that you looked at them? Haven't you seen uh, terrible crimes in history? About, about rivalry? Either from men or women. Isn't that true? So what, the, what I'm trying to tell you is that envy is a reality in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hang on one issue or the other. The process was not nice. If the process didn't, didn't please you, if, it, if you were the beneficiary of the wrong process, will you complain? You, are you following me? Mm -hmm. See, this is a, a situation. You have to understand politics. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's a game of selective morality, outrageous paradox, and double standard. So you just listen and be careful. And always remember the necessity for choice based on three Ps. Power, do you have it? Principle. Do you have it? And how far can you go with principle? Mm -hmm. And then pragmatism, choice of timing. Oh, I see you are very enthusiastic about the Atiku Pita Obiti. Of course, well, 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 I take it that that's your preferred ticket. No, 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 no. I can't, I can't say that. I'm just analyzing. You asked me about the, the, uh, the objections of some people in the mm. Southeast. Mm. And why uh, you may use the word uh, so, uh, so called marginalization. I told you it's not so. No, I said reported marginalization. No, in fact, the reported marginalization is not just reported, they're existing. Mm -hmm. Take any, any, 
Since you, are, uh, uh, since you have been in this country as a, a citizen and a, a born citizen, have you ever seen a situation where take up the list of any major issue in Nigeria, particularly the security sector? You don't see any in them? Is it true that there's no qualified evils? The world recognizes evils if you don't. I must tell you, the world recognizes evils if you don't. If you see them making waves everywhere, it is their own loss if you don't use their talent. In fact, they are of exceptionally intelligent. In fact, God bless them. And I sincerely believe that part of the problem of the country is not utilizing what they have. Because if you prefer mediocrity, you get a mediocrity country. It's about 80 days to the general election. Yes. As Nigerians file out in the next 80 days to pick the candidate of their choice, uh, what advice would you be giving them? What should they be looking out for? Believe me, Nigerians should look for a, an, a, a leader who promises inclusive government. A leader with a horizon beyond the ethnicity. In fact, a leader beyond... Uh, 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 any form of discrimination, whether it is religion, ethnicity, or regionalism, fairness, justice, throughout history, those denied justice have had no interest in peace. So people should stop all this uh, emphasis on peace without justice. It, we will never have it here. It never existed in history. As long as the leadership has not embraced justice, you will never have peace. Wait, who will endure injustice? And then be there and love you, your leader, and be a patriot. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. History forbids that. And you cannot go against history and expect uh, something that is, is, is not, it can never happen. So what I'm trying to do, we need a leader who is a nationalist. There is too much in this country about uh, identity crisis of leadership and all that. I sincerely believe. If you're a Nigerian, you're a Nigerian. Even if they're not from your tribe or your religion or your zone, you should have a national sentiment about a sense of balancing. Again, I will tell you because I have experience. Among the first books I wrote early was Precarious Balance, Politics of Precarious Balance. How this country, to rule it, you must know what you call theory of coalitions. How did our founding fathers succeed? We're talking, we started this thing with the political party uh, manifesto. Our founding fathers' manifesto were real. Okay. They implemented them. Uh, free education, isn't that true? Yes. Uh, you understand, man? Uh, the, uh, the, the NPC was not for the North, isn't that true? NCC, NCC, only NCC would say they wanted to be a nation. National Party, isn't that true? But when they got uh, to the scene, they realized that their support is only in the East. You, you know what I mean? Yes, of course. It, it caused confusion here when Zeke won in the Western House. Isn't that, you, you ready? 1951. You, you are all uh, Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to tell you is that they manage their party manifesto, manage the politics well, and develop competitively, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They develop competitively. And then, since the military came, everything changed. It is now government of monopoly. We will not take all. Well, and then well, you expect some people to be happy. Well, Why? Well, on this note, we'll have to bring uh, this to a close. Good man. Very exciting, very educating, very yes, light. very insightful to have you <laughs> here. Like being in the just, classroom. Yes, that's all I was doing, <laughs> taking notes on everything. Yeah. So, Prof, thank you very thank much. You. I'm glad. I've enjoyed this I'm very glad. Much. I'm thank glad. You. Thank I'm you glad. for joining I'm us. Glad. Thank you. Well, it's now time for a short break.